But let's start with Nitin Gadkari. I have to tell you that one of the most positive in your face manifestations of the India story and the potential of India is what's been happening on India's roads, especially the highways and now the expressways. In the not so distant past, we've all seen or heard jokes about the potholes of Indian roads and even on the highways, those big expressways that we should have been proud of. There were potholes on them, there were people encroaching, you used to be driving and there would be tractors coming on the wrong side, cows crossing the road, suddenly having to screech to a halt. Today, we are seeing a very different India emerging on the highways and on the expressways. Let me just give you a few simple examples. Take a look at this. The 1350 kilometer long, eight lane wide Delhi Mumbai expressway. It's going to be India's longest and it's going to be launched. It's already started. The first segments of it have already been inaugurated. The rest will be done within a year, maybe a year and a half. It's going to be reducing travel time between the cities by 50%. Or take a look at this, the Mumbai Nagpur Expressway. It connects 24 districts in the state and it has reduced travel time between Mumbai and Nagpur to 8 hours from 16 hours. Or this, the expressway that is running to Lucknow through Uttar Pradesh, it has cut travel time already. You can speed along that right now. The Delhi to Meerut Expressway, designed for high vehicular traffic, connects Delhi and Meerut in a record time, 45 minutes. It used to take two and a half hours earlier. The Delhi Dehradun Expressway, that's something else that's uh, uh, under construction right now. It takes about five and a half hours right now. You will be able to make that journey in two, two and a half hours just a few months from now, maybe a year from now. Delhi Amritsar, a travel time of 10 hours. It's going to be completed in about four hours, a short while from now. Um, the journey from Bengaluru to Chennai is going to take less than three hours. That is what is happening. Look across the map. This is a dramatic transformation. How is all of this happening? Look, there was already a national highway program that's been rolled out all the way back at the time of the Golden Quadrilateral. The highway program program was up and running. Now, many of the roads are being upgraded and they are fresh greenfield expressways they are coming. What's the difference? On the expressway, you can travel at 120 kilometers. And because these are access controlled expressways, they're elevated, you can't just cross. Existing Indian national highways, you're driving along and as I was telling you, somebody's crossing, there's an encroachment taking place, cows are crossing the road, you're having trucks coming the wrong side. It cannot happen on the expressways. So you can actually travel at 120 kilometers for a very, very long period of time. And you maintain that there are massive benefits. And then the other things, you have roadside amenities, you have spur roads that are connecting the expressways to individual cities. The expressway program runs together with the overall objectives, which are to connect the country all around with two lakh kilometers of all weather national highways. You know something, only 2% of our road network right now is national highways, and yet that carries 40% of road traffic. So, essentially, the idea of the entire highway program is you double the connectivity to the hinterland by connecting 500 out of the 718 districts in the country. Now, these plans, Bharat Pariyojana, as it was called, one, it has seen some delays. The Bharat Pariyojana plan, uh, Bharat Mala phase one, it was launched in 2017 and it should have created approximately 35,000 kilometers by 2022. A pandemic and some other roadblocks, including around environmental clearances or land acquisitions, did slow it down, but it's being told to us that that plan is back on track and also there are plans to kick off phase two in parallel. So at the end of the day, you might still be able to achieve all the goals in a very definite period of time. Can it really happen? Do we have the financial strength to be able to complete both the phases in parallel? Estimated budget could be something like $130 billion. How is that going to be managed? How will we overcome issues such as land acquisition and environmental clearances and all those other questions that have plagued projects over the period of time?
Well, who better to answer that question than Nitin Gadkari, the Minister for Road Transport, the person who's been driving this entire initiative for the last eight years, the person who's widely credited with having changed the face of India's highways and expressways. And I got the chance to sit down with him for a rather exhaustive, exclusive interview earlier this week. I'm going to now play that for you. But anybody who comes to India and tries to understand the India story, there is one aspect of the India story that strikes you right in the face. When you are driving from one city to the other in India, you cannot help but be staggered by the sort of highways and expressways that are now being built. Many thought it was impossible, but it has started to be possible. And we are with the man who has made it all possible, Nitin Gadkari, Minister for Roads, Transport, uh, Nitin, Nitin, I have to say that the roads that you have built, the expressways that you have built, are quite, um, even the international press is now talking about them. What do you think is the secret for it? Because people said a country like India cannot build roads like this. Actually, frankly speaking, without, we need to develop good industry, capital investment. Without that, we cannot eradicate poverty. Because for creating industry, we need water, power, transport, and communication. Without this infrastructure, we don't have employment potential. And without employment potential, we cannot eradicate the poverty. So development of infrastructure is the most important priority for the government. Uh, and uh, Prime Minister Modi ji has given highest priority for that. And it is a really great thing that we are developing the road infrastructure and my, it's my estimate that uh, in the end of 24, it will be equivalent to the road infrastructure of USA. And in we are quality or quantity? Yeah, no, it's quality and quantity also. We have six world record in this year. And actually, we have highest network, road network of national highway in the world. And we are now, the way in which we are developing the road infrastructure, the quality, using the best technology, using the waste material. We are using municipal solid waste. In the Delhi Ring Road 2, we have used already 20 lakh ton of municipal waste. In Ahmedabad Dolero Express Highway, we are using 20 lakh ton of waste from Ahmedabad. So way in which we want to protect ecology and environment, at the same time we want to develop the good road infrastructure, and we are doing for that. We are making tunnels of 2 lakh 50 thousand crore we are only making works in Kashmir of 1 lakh crore. We are making the road construction of 5 lakh crore in Northeast, Assam, Arunachal, Meghalaya, Tripura, everywhere. So all part of the India, we are given priority for that. And our budget is also good. At the same time, we are raising fund from the market. We don't have any resources problem. And 100% we will make it with international standard. I remember interviewing you in 2014 and you had said I'm going to increase the speed of road construction from 6 or 7 kilometers to 30 and I was almost, you said watch we are going to do it and I didn't believe it and then it started to happen. And of course critics would say there's, there's some difference between single lane and multiple lane. Is the speed now of road construction much higher than it was earlier? Actually the, when we calculate the construction by road as per lane is concerned, it is the same. Previously, the same system was there with the international system. At today also, the same system, we are going by that. And today, our at, we have already, now if to last year, we have 38 kilometers. And we are now, for this year also, we will try to maintain that. But this year, because of rains and COVID's impact is there. But still, we will have a good record construction. And we are trying to increase it to make it more for that. I was just explaining to our viewers who are sometimes looking at India, and this is also going out internationally a lot, and trying to understand what exactly is happening. If you could just explain to us the strategy behind this. So there was, once there was the golden quadrilateral that was there. Then you said, okay, they're going to be national highways. Now there are these expressways coming up, which are access controlled and the speed goes up to 120. And then there's, you know, Bharat Pariyojana. So if you could just explain what's the strategy that you are following? Actually, at the time when I take in charge as the minister, the national highway length was 98,000 kilometer. Presently it is 1,48,000 kilometer. We have taken the Bharat Mala 1, 
that is of uh, the project is of 24,000 kilometer and the cost of the project is 30 lakh crores. So the oh, now we are already have completed some of the road and uh, already the construction is going on. We now want to start Bharat Mala 2. It is with the cabinet approval. And the most important thing I will tell you, when I was shipping minister, there was Sagar Mala. My budget was 1000 crore. And by using that budget, we have taken the program of Bhara Sagar Mala of 16 lakh crore. And out of which, on the port strength, the major 12 major port we have at that time, and we have completed project more than 10 lakh crores. So we raised the funds from the market, capital market. And that is the reason we don't have money problem. My toll income is 40,000 crore per year. And next end of 24, it will be 1 lakh 40,000 crore. So you are saying that the roads are being built, but the funds are not necessarily coming from the tax. Already I am giving you the example. Our budget is good. It is 2 lakh 18,000 crore. It's to be a very big budget. But still we can add 2 to 3 lakhs from the capital market we are raising, we are monetizing the road. I am giving the example. In our Invit model, we are just going for Mumbai Stock Exchange for raising funds for our Invit project. The time was prescribed for 10 days. But in the first day, 7 hours, our bond issue was subscribed 7 times more. That was the response from the investor because it's a success story and we are giving return to the people. 8.5 percent and that is to be interest will be given every month in their account the retired people the pensioners the service people they have an opportunity to get the return on their investment 8.5 percent per year and they will get the interest every month in their account did i hear you saying that the toll income is going to go from 40,000 crore rupees to north of 100,000 yes crore? yes yes i'm just telling you about the express highway it is very important it's a big list we are making green express highway also. First of Delhi Mumbai express highway, the size is 1,386 kilometer. Cost of this road is 1 lakh 2,000 crore. 64% work has already completed. Then other is Ahmedabad Dolera, 109 kilometer. The cost of the projects is 5,000 crore. 28% work is already completed. The Bangalore Chennai, presently it takes five hours. It will be two hours from Bangalore to Chennai. From Delhi to Mumbai, present it is 48 hours, it will be 12 hours. And from Ahmedabad to Dolero, it will be half hour. So Delhi to Dehradun, you told me it's going to be two hours. Two now. hours. Delhi to Dehradun, Haridwar, two to hours. Chennai. Delhi to Chandigarh, two and a half hours. Delhi to Jaipur, two hours. Delhi to Amritsar, four hours. Delhi to Katra, six hours. Delhi to Srinagar, eight hours. And now we have just completed the project from Mysore to Bangalore. Presently it's about four hours, now it is one hour. But you know, Gadkari uh, one of the things is, these expressways are beautiful. When you get onto the expressway, you're going along at a fantastic rate and it's great. But when you come into the cities, that's when there are all these little, little, little bottlenecks that happen. Like today, if you were to go to Jaipur, Delhi to get onto the expressway, from Delhi to get onto the expressway will take you one hour. 180 kilometers what you will do in one hour, 15 minutes. And then to get into Jaipur will take you another one and a half hours. So it's that last mile which I think you're trying to fix in Bharat. Actually, in Jaipur also, I got opportunity to construct ring road of the Jaipur. It is completed. My problem is city road is with the municipal corporation. Mm. The state roads are with the state governments. And in Delhi also, there are some roads with the municipal corporation, some roads with DDA, some roads with the state corporation. I am only responsible for national highway. So I, it's only for, possible for me to make any type of expenditure only on national highway. I cannot make any expenditure on other roads. And then you have to persuade the cities and the state government. But to now say, I am just telling the you the example of Delhi. Oh. Can you believe me that we are doing road construction in Delhi of rupees sixty-two thousand crore near to Delhi? I am just giving you the detail about it. The Dwarka Express Highway. The work is going on, 80% is completed. The length of the road is 30 km and cost is 10,000 crore. Six lane UER, urban extension road, 76 km, cost is 9,000 crore, 57% work is completed. This is very important road. Now from Punjab, Haryana, Chandigarh, you are coming to airport. Just before Pani, after Panipat, the peripheral road is there. And from that point going up to the airport, it takes two and a half hour. 
but we are making new this six lane UER2 by which we can go to airport within 20 minutes to Dwarka. That will presumably help in pollution in Delhi. If you can fix the pollution in Delhi. It will I am be. sure that up to end of 24, we will reduce the pollution of Delhi by 50%. That is to be guaranteed and given to you. 50%? Yes. Pollution reduction. Because the Delhi's maximum pollution is because of the fossil fuel. And even for Perli and other things, we have taken a lot of initiative. 100% will reduce the pollution of Delhi by 50%. One miracle, uh, Katkariji, and I've asked you this question, I think, before also. You know, you can build beautiful roads, that's not, and the fact that you've done that is very creditable. What has truly taken me by surprise is the fact that there have been no protests, no danga, no people you know, parading around and saying, how can you do this? Because it used to be said, China can build roads and not India, because China can just take people's land. India, you will have so much problem in land acquisition, you will never be able to build expressways. And yet you built a 1,200-kilometer Mumbai, Delhi-Mumbai expressway in, what, two years, three years, and there's not been any ruckus over land acquisition. How have you managed that? First of all, we are given the land acquisition cost to the farmers, reasonably good. Now, presently, it is to be more than capital, the, more than the market cost. And actually, what my feeling is, I am farmer. So, we want to take the land with the former with the reasonable cost. We don't want to exploit them. The other important thing is environment, forest clearance, utility shifting, railway problems. There is a committee appointed by, under my chairmanship, the Prime Minister appointed a committee, infrastructure committee. We are every time taking the subjects, all related with the roads and other infrastructure projects. And the response from the, all the ministries is good. And the, one of the important decisions which we have taken, at the time when I had taken charge of the minister, there was 402 projects costing 3,85,000 crores, stole project. My department and my ministry saved the Indian banks from the NPA of 3 lakh crores. And we resolved the issue. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason that today, without having 90% of the land acquisition, Without having all clearances from the forest and environment and railway, we have, first of all, we are given priority for utility shifting. And after that, we are giving appointment date. And that is the reason we don't have any problem. But looking at the land acquisition point that you were just making, you are saying that earlier what used to happen was that the farmers were given 10% or 5% of what the actual value of their land was. So they were bound to protest about it. Now you are saying you are giving them higher in the market value of the land. So they are very happy to offer yeah, it Now people are coming to me, not saying that don't acquire my land. They are coming to me that you have already acquired this land. The balanced land is with us. Now you can acquire this for uh, roadside amenities and other things. Because they are happy. We are giving good uh, rate to them. And the fact you are paying higher for the land in land acquisition, you probably make that money up, right, by being able to do the projects faster without getting stuck in litigation, without getting... Yes, yes. Actually, for the green alignment, for making a, a expansion of the road, for the property, we need to give them reasonable acquisition cost. That is very important. Because in Indian situation, it was the... Particularly, there was the passion that with the low cost, we acquired the land. And there was no... Uh, they can't appeal anywhere. And that is the reason there was a lot of uh, disturbances because of everyone was disturbed. And that the reason that after 2014, the new Land Acquisition Act which was passed, fortunately I, I was a minister for rural development at that time because the death of Gopinath Mundeji, the Prime Minister has given me the charge and the bill was introduced to the Parliament and it's really a reasonably good bill. And because of that, farmers are getting justice and that resolved the problem. So once they're getting justice, they don't mind giving the land. Yes. Um, one of the other things you were talking about is looking after the environment. So that will always be a problem. One is giving good compensation to the farmers. Sometimes to build those roads, you'll have to cut trees. In the Dehradun, Delhi, one, you're going over the forest, you're giving wildlife corridors. So you have to balance the environment with the need to build those expressways and roads. We need to balance development with the environment. We have to protect the ecology and environment. But just I am giving you the example for this we have presently we have 3 crores 76 lakh of plantation out of which 3 lakh 3 crore 56 lakhs 
already it is ETAC. And now we have taken a decision that we should have a tree of 3 meter size. We have successfully transplanted the tree more than 1 lakh now. So we don't want to cut the tree, we want to protect it. You are transplanting the tree. The tree. Yes, yes. And at the same time, the most important thing is regarding the road construction, now we are planning to use bio bitumen. We have a big project in Panipat from Indian Oil. The project is making bio bitumen, 150 ton of bitumen per day and 1 lakh liter of bioethanol per day. And they are using Perli. And because of burning of problem, Perli is a big problem in Delhi. That is one of the important reasons for the pollution. So instead of using stubble, burning ah, the yes. stubble, it can be used yes, for bitumen. Yes, yes. Now I am going to launch. Presently in India, we have requirement of bitumen 80 lakh ton. Out of Indian refineries, capacity is of 50 lakh ton. And 30 lakh ton we need to expo import. Now idea is there is a tractor molded unit of costing 20 lakhs rupees. And it is to be uh, proven technology from Central Research Road Organization and CSIR. They have present with the technology. Now we are formulating the policy by which farmers can make bitumen and we will purchase from them and they will get now presently the farmers are Annadatta. After that we started the green ethanol and other thing. We name it as Urjadatta and now we will make farmer as a bitumen data. <laughs> diversification data. of agriculture towards energy and power sector is the mission for me. I am working from 2004 on this subject. We have to protect the ecology and environment. At the same time, we need to increase the growth rate of agriculture and rural India. But the biggest challenge that will probably be facing, uh, once these roads are built and everything is, is, is great, but I'm sure you feel that one of the most biggest inflection points that is now coming is with electric vehicles. The entire era of petrol burning or fossil fuel building cars will go and you'll have electric cars coming. What can you do to make that change faster? How does India become one of the leaders in electric vehicles, not a follower? Actually, as far as the actual manufacturer is concerned, the size of the industry is 7 lakh, uh, 7.50 7, uh, 7 lakhs crores. Now I'm telling you, we out of which 50% we have export. And this is the industry which is giving maximum GST to the state and central government. This is the industry up till now create 4 crore 50 lakhs jobs. Now my mission as a transport minister to make this industry of 15 lakh crore. Now our number was number 4. Japan was number 3rd. The China was number 1. USA was number 2. Japan was number 3rd. And India was number 4. But just last month, we surpassed Japan. Now our number is number 3rd. We make more cars than Japan. That's yes, and I will tell you, you take it from me that within five years, we want to make Indian atoll industry number one in the world. We have all reputed brands present in Indian market. And now because of electric vehicle, the make in India, made in India, and because of Atmanirbhar Bharat, we have got the skilled, trained engineering manpower available in India. Raw materials are available in India. Now just we have got this lithium ion stocks in Jammu and Kashmir. Every year we have an import of 1200 ton of lithium ion. Now I am sure that we are now developing the chemistry by aluminum ion, zinc ion, steel ion, by which we will create alternatives. Our startups are doing excellent jobs. And not only in electric, we are working on ethanol, methanol, biodiesel, bio CNG, bio LNG, electric and hydrogen. Uh, I have got car. I can, this is the first car in India which I have got. You can take the run of that car, it is on hydrogen. I would have take a hydrogen fuel yes, car. Yes, yes, I have got it. I am taking that. Your... Yes, I will, I will just take it, this give you the car, you just take the drive of it. <laughs> All right. So green hydrogen is one option, which is India is trying to be one of the leaders in, in, in hydrogen fuel cars. But when it comes to electric vehicles, there's a perception that China has got a clear edge. You know, Bide, others. So China is really manufacturing a lot of electric cars. Is it your vision that we should try and phase out petrol cars and move to these new technologies within a certain period of time? Actually, in a time -bound manner? I am not very much interested in all these theoretical questions. I am asking you a simple question. If you have a petrol car and your expenditure on the petrol is 30,000 rupees per month, and by electric car with the more comforts, your expense will be 3,000 rupees per month. I don't need to make marketing of that. People are taking, there is a waiting list. 
for Tata and Mahindra electric car, there is a waiting list. Even electric bike also, there is a waiting list. But your capital cost originally can be a little higher and maybe you have to replace yes, batteries. Yes, it is to be $150 per hour something that cost is going on. But I feel that now it is coming to $115. And now within one or two years, it will be $100. Then it will be equivalent to petrol vehicle. Right, fine. So let's, let's wait so for yeah, that. Now in the all cities, we have electric buses. I just telling you the success story of electric buses. Now we have just received the tender of electric bus. Non-AC bus, it comes 39 rupees per kilometer. And uh, for AC bus, it comes 41 rupees per kilometer. And the cost of the diesel bus is 115 rupees per kilometer. So today it's economically viable. We can afford uh, air-conditioned electric buses and by which we can reduce the cost of ticket by 30%. But what about the charging infrastructure, which is still not at that level? I know you're putting charging stations in those no, expressways that you're you building. You go and see, I, I have got charging in my house. I will show you. You take the shooting of that. So there is everywhere the electric car, electric scooter. Everyone can charge his car and scooter at night in his house. And for making big, as of Delhi to Simla, yeah, Delhi to Mumbai, Delhi to Lucknow, where we need charging stations, we are now developing 670 roadside amenities on national highway and everywhere there will be the charging station. You know, I'm, I'm, it's a category, I'm sure you will be able to build the express stage, you'll be able to build the highways, you may even get electric cars to run everywhere, it could even be hydrogen. How are you going to treat the, teach the Indian people to drive and follow all rules? How is that going to be achieved? This is the lane on AC lane, how are you going to get someone to do that? You are absolutely correct. This is a subject where my success story is, is not very satisfactory. Every year we have 5 lakhs accidents, 1 lakh 50 thousand deaths. There are problems related to road engineering, automobile engineering. There was some problem with the enforcement of law. We have already passed road safety bill, so we are taking action, the cameras, all things are there. There is a problem with the education also. We need to educate the people. And now I have come to conclude after eight years, it is a problem of human behavior. Kanun ke prati dar bhi nahi aur sanban bhi nahi, si vichit ravastha mein hai. We need to educate the people, we need the help from media, we need help from the education institution, universities, colleges, NGOs, social organization, and we need to change the behavior of the people. The same people go to Dubai. I mean, if you go to Dubai or you go to the Middle East, I just come from there. Every single taxi driver and every person who's out there seems to be from India. Some of them are Pakistan, but a lot of them are from India. They're being able to drive perfectly fine there. They follow all the rules. They go in the same lane. They don't overtake the wrong side. We are taking a lot of initiative. You are absolutely correct. This is a problem. The problem of because of we need to change the human behavior. They need to understand because the death in this at one lakh fifty thousand death. Even you compare with any war, any COVID, any problem. The death, particularly in India, 1,50,000 deaths in road accidents. And out of which, 34% deaths are belongs to age of 18 to 24. Unfortunately, it's very bad. We need to stop that. That is the reason now we are taking a lot of initiative. We have a lot of program on the TV. The celebrities like Abhitabh Bachchan, Akshay Kumarji, they are all giving cooperation for that. And the day will come that we will change the human behavior and 100% we are working on that. But still, I am telling you, we don't have good results. We need to work hard for that. We Tougher are trying. licensing, could that be the solution? Already it is started. Now you cannot get the license. We are, there are 16 digital systems by which we have already simplified the system. Problem is the human behavior. When there is a red signal, this is that, that he should stop there. If suppose the lane discipline, he should to have the obey the lane discipline. The problem is helmet. Or the two-wheeler, he has to, helmet is important for him for an accident. It is very important for the safety of his life. But unfortunately, people are not taking seriously. That is one of the reasons. But still now the people, the human behavior is changing. But we need to do more for that. This is a problem. And sometimes I feel that in my own ministry, everything is a success story. But regarding road accident, I feel that we need to do more for that. We don't have a satisfactory result for that. Nitin Gadkariji, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you.
Nitin Gutkari is speaking to me just a short while back. Look, those are very ambitious plans that he's talking about. But to be fair and to be frank, if someone had told you eight years ago or nine years ago that it was going to be possible to build a Greenfield Expressway all the way from Delhi to Mumbai, and it's going to be built within two to three years, and you will be have the ability to go from Delhi to Mumbai in just 12 hours, you wouldn't have believed it. A lot of what has already been achieved in roads and highways is frankly really impressive. It used to be said, China can build roads, China can acquire the land and drive expressways from one part of the country to the other. India will never be able to do that and certainly not on a great field basis. But it has happened. And so let's hope that the rest of those ambitious plans that Nitin Gadkari was talking about right now also come to pass and come to pass fairly soon.